Hi, today we're discussing the current trends happening across R&D within the biotechnology industry. I work with biotech firms across the UK, which is an exceptional hub for innovation and draws some outstanding scientific minds in from all across Europe. There are, are regular conversations that I have that really do blow me away with the progress that we're making in the field from cell therapies to immuno-oncology, and most recently, the rise of artificial intelligence in drug discovery. Have you seen any significant changes or trends since the emergence of COVID-19 and on lockdown? I think it's fair to say that these are the most unusual times for everyone at the moment, really, not being able to see your families, go outside or go to work, which it, it's naturally had a bit of an impact on the job seeker market as a whole. And this medically focused sector uh, has been impacted. So how have you seen this the situation affect uh, the bio se biotech sector in the UK, Charles? The past couple of months have generally seen SME biotechs press the pause button slightly on their hiring processes as they, they reevaluate how they're going to navigate COVID in the near term. And like every industry, there have unfortunately been some redundancies. Overall, I'd say there's been less new vacancies in R&D, but with the majority of preclinical drug discovery taking place inside a lab, this hasn't been so much surprising. Not every scientist is fortunate enough to have a PCR machine next to the kettle. But I'm pleased to say there's definitely been an uptick in recent new vacancies now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's been a recent change in sentiment, that's for sure. And, uh, and some companies are now moving ahead to a bit of a post-lockdown state. Yeah, uh, so they're taking the time to establish their hiring strategies whilst also continuing to interview for new roles um, and to be ahead of the curve, really, once restrictions have eased a bit further. I mean, many companies have already made commitments to upscaling or to hiring for their business and where innovations need to be commercialized there's a, a need to upscale production quality commercial functions and for some of the most innovative series a or series b funded firms investments have already been committed to in some cases quite a long time ago and um, so they really exist outside of the financial impact and the cycle of, of, of lockdown um, yeah, and they're doing these things, you know, whilst still integrating social distancing wherever possible. Yes, yeah, I'd say you're quite right there. A company's strategy, including growth, it often depends on its financial status. And in times of hardship, growth sometimes isn't as expected before then. But yeah, the, the, the past two weeks in particular, they've seen an uptick in exciting new roles coming about. There's ongoing pre-existing investment, which will be developing and commercializing these innovative therapies further. But there's even been further investments and movements in the space throughout the global pandemic. So a record setting $1.2 billion from AZ's UK tied vaccine program and a flurry of IPOs have actually seen the sector remain fairly buoyant. So there there was a strong unmet need for healthcare before the pandemic, and that need will certainly be there, if not emphasised further, long after. Yeah, so so to, to summarise then, it's starting to look a bit more positive for job seekers, so don't, don't lose hope, and the next opportunity could be just around the corner, because uh, there's certainly a lot of organisations that are keeping momentum and, and, and still active in, uh, in securing talent through these times. Yeah, and we're really perfectly placed across Europe to be kept connecting job seekers with their next opportunity with innovative customers. Cheers. Thanks.